Hello and welcome to BCH 369, Fundamentals of Biochemistry, a one-semester course for non-majors in the field of biochemistry administered at the University of Texas at Austin. My name is Dr. Grabner and mine will be the voice you hear in these video presentations. We'll be using as our textbook the third edition of Essential Biochemistry by Pratt and Cornelly and the figures and il illustrations you'll see in these video presentations are largely from that book, though they may also be from public access websites. In some cases the URL is given for further investigation. If you're using the second edition of Pratt and Cornley, you should have no trouble following the content as the figures were only slightly modified with the third edition. Let's begin our study of biochemistry with Chapter 1, The Chemical Basis of Life. In this lesson, we will introduce some basic concepts of biochemistry, see its relation to other sciences, and also see its significance and relevance. Biochemistry is a science that seeks to understand and explain life at the molecular level. Though we will consider more of the details as we proceed, there are four general types of biomolecules that you will see throughout the course and they are illustrated on this slide. On the left we have nucleic acids and carbohydrates and on the right we have proteins and lipids. The textbook is divided into four basic sections and we will consider them in order with only one exception. Section 1 includes a brief introduction and review in Chapter 1, followed by a consideration of water and its properties in Chapter 2. All living systems operate in an aqueous environment, so understanding the properties of water is crucial to understanding how molecules behave in that environment. Section 2 of the text includes chapters 3 through 11 and is essentially a consideration of molecular structure and function. One of the most fundamental tenets of biochemistry is the direct relationship between the structure of a biological molecule or system and its function. Understanding function can enable us then to fit it into the larger context of the cell or organism. We will reserve our consideration of Chapter 3 for Section 4 of the text, as we'll describe later. In Section 3, we will be concerned with the transformation of matter and energy, that is, metabolism. This will include Chapters 12 through 19. Lastly, we will consider the management of gen genetic information in Section 4, including Chapters 20 through 22, as well as Chapter 3. At the top right of our screen, you see a photograph of a building under construction. Of course, the building is assembled from a basic foundation and built in a step-by-step -step fashion. So, during the course of the semester, we will first establish our foundation principles and then proceed to build thereon in a stepwise fashion. It's going to be important for you to build your understanding as you go. If you attempt to skip a step, your understanding will not be sound and I can tell you, you will not perform well on exams. All of the information included in your book has been in uncovered in just the last 50 years. And so for this reason, we can consider biochemistry a very young science, though of course its roots do go back much further than the last 50 years. Along the way, not only have we gained a better understanding of basic biological systems and how they function, but research techniques have also been developed that help us to better understand those systems. Part of what we will consider in this course is not just the science, but the methods used to elucidate and study that science. The significance of the science of biochemistry relates to its capacity to explain living systems at the molecular level. 
An understanding of the physical structure and chemical reactivity of individual molecules like DNA and the enzyme citrate synthase illustrated at the bottom right of our screen help us to understand how such molecules combine to form large organelles within a cell such as the mitochondrion or the larger cell itself, like a hepatocyte illustrated here. We are then prepared to understand how cells combine to form a functioning organ and how multiple organs function together in a complex organism such as a human. The study of biochemistry also involves the development and use of very specific terminology. Nature is very specific in its structures and functions, so we must be very specific in representing and explaining them. You want to become comfortable with the language of biochemistry and practice using its terminology in a consistent way. It may seem cumbersome at first, but soon you will recognize the patterns and that will help you better grasp the principles behind them. We also need a method that will allow us to illustrate three-dimensional molecules in two-dimensional space in a reliable way. On the bottom of our slide, we see three representations of the amino acid alanine. On the far left, we have the structural formula, a very simple representation that only conveys the atoms present in the molecule and the bonds connecting them together. It doesn't convey any information about the three-dimensional structure. In the center, we have the ball and stick model of the same molecule. This view allows us to see not only the atoms and the bonds connecting them, but also gives us an idea of how they are arranged in three-dimensional space. The limitation of this model is that it conveys nothing about the size of the molecule. Lastly, on the far right, we have the space-filling model of alanine. We can see in this model not only the three-dimensional arrangement of atoms, but we also get a better idea of the size of the molecule. The biological molecules that we will consider in this course might be represented by any one or all of these three ways. Biochemistry is fundamentally a chemical science. It is, after all, biochemistry. So it is the study of the structure of biological molecules and their chemical interactions. However, it is also a study of thermodynamics, that is, the transformation of energy into living matter. These two aspects of biochemistry, chemistry and energy, will be involved in almost every topic we will consider. We often speak of the unity of biochemistry, the basic structures, mechanisms, and chemical processes are shared by all living organisms as we know them. For the student of biochemistry, this means that an understanding of a simple organism, such as unicellular E. coli, also relates to understanding an organism as complex as a human and how it functions. This gives biochemistry a relevance in the study of any living system. It is therefore concerned with the wonder of life itself. I look forward to sharing that wonder with you as we explore the principles and processes of the amazing science of biochemistry. In our next video lesson, we will examine the four fundamental types of biological molecules alluded to earlier in this lesson.